discuss this topic or why did the topic come so much to my heart is because we are living in some serious times and the saints are forgetting who they really are. We are getting a lot of distractions. People are thinking about whether they belong to Israel. People are looking at uh, whether God is their God. Some people say he says he's the God of he's the Israelites, so it's not the God of the Cameroonians or the Africans or the Japanese. But God is not a God, he's a God of the human race. It's not a God of individual people. He is a creator of the heavens and the earth. And as I was, I'm doing some writing also, which God helping in my come up soon, who said, this really hit me very hard. And um, as we've read the topic today, uh, we'll read the scripture in Ephesians 2, to see that only Jesus can make us alive. Now, the Bible says, quicken us, one who were dead in sins and trespasses. He, had, he, he quickened us as um, that verse, verse 1 and verse 5 in Ephesians 2 really says almost the same thing. Verse 1 says, And you he made alive, O quicken, who were dead in trespasses and sin. And verse 5 says, And when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved. By grace you have been saved. Quicken. I want us to look at that word a bit and, 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 and just um, who can give me a definition of that? What do you understand by amen? He made alive, you'll be made alive, you've been quickened. I'll just get one or two answers so that we don't um, waste more time there because we just want to hear what God is saying to all of us again. It's not something you don't know, but God wants to reinforce us in His word. Praise the Lord. Anybody? Since I can't see you because the screen is in front of me, you can just speak. Awakened. And then you open. Pardon? Awaken. Awaken. I like that word. Awaken. Is it from sleep? <laughs> well, we were. Praise the spiritually, Lord. Spiritually. Spiritually. Spiritually alive. Spiritual, spir spiritually alive. Okay, um, let me draw our attention to the word dead. Amen? You who were dead. Now, if somebody is dead, you can cut out their body and they wouldn't feel any pain, would they? Mm -hmm. No. They wouldn't. If we have a thousand, um, what would I say, chicken, dead in the house, they will never lay an egg because they are dead. Amen. So there is no life in them. Dead things have no life in them. They are just mm. dead. They can't, res they can't respond to anything. Amen. I just want you to keep that really in mind. They can't respond to anything. Dead. Just looking at death. Um, the sea itself, the sea, the ocean, doesn't like dead things, does it? If something dies in the sea, it pushes it out. Because it doesn't like anything that is dead to stay in it. So whether they are shark or whether they are human, you will see the body being pushed out of the shore because they are dead. Living organisms don't like dead things because it's dead. Now I'm just looking at the natural for you to begin to see that image of the spiritual more. Amen. In, 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 in the, you, you get sometimes um, fetus that come out of mother's womb. If the child is dead before the nine month, the womb wouldn't keep that, that, that fetus for nine months. It will send it out. Because the body just likes to keep only live stuff, living stuff. So we who were dead, see us as really dead. That nothing can affect us. So this is why I'm trying to bring our attention towards the end that we'll realize that Christianity is not a religion. 
Mm. Jesus has to faith. touch you. Mm. Jesus has, we can't even respond to faith as we think that we are saved by faith. You, we, the deadness that we are in, the word of God has to touch us. Mm. The power of God has to bring us to life before we can even respond to that word. So when people are walking and they don't have not received Christ, they are just dead men walking. We are dead spiritually. Mm. We are spiritually dead. So we can join any religion that we can to learn some rules and to learn some knowledge and understanding that you can't be made alive in Christ except he touches you. Amen. And when we begin to see this, we can understand how Jesus says, except my father draws you. So there's a power that has to pull you out of the grave before we can really hear the voice of God. Sometimes when people are not um, responding to the call of God, if they don't turn their, their ears and their heart towards that word, God can draw them so they will just remain dead. Mm. It doesn't matter how much we talk to them, except the word says, you who were dead in your sins and trust, mm. you need to be quickened. You need yeah. to be made alive before you can even respond to the gospel. Mm. We were dead. So when you are called by God and you respond, it's a privilege that the life of God has drawn us out of the grave, out of death, to hear him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord Jesus. The, you, Bible, Jesus. the Bible talks about Ecclesiastes, in Ecclesiastes 9, verse 4, it talks about that a living dog is better than a dead lion. Mm. A living dog is better than a dead lion. Why? Now, the dog there is not just like the best, ma the, as we look at dogs in England, man's best friend. It's not that. The connotation in the Hebrew, there was, you know, when they say you're a dog, it means you're just kind of worthless. But your <laughs> Gentiles, Gentiles were called dogs. So you, you're really no good. Mm. And then when, when, when David was going to, to Goliath, uh, Goliath said, am I a dog that you should come to? That's, that, that's a disdain, the way that it, it just hated. So when it says the, the, the living dog there, it's not really giving the dog. And it's showing you that though you are alive and your life may be miserable and, and not even worth anything, but because you are alive, you have hope that God can still touch you. So deathless, when somebody's dead, you're just gone. And, and then, um, let me just get to the next slide, please. I'm kind of moving a bit ahead of myself a little bit, but just to, to amen. It, 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 tells, it tells you that, um, praise the Lord Jesus. I'm trying to get a slide up for you, so just be patient with us. Only Jesus, uh, uh, yeah, in Ephesians verse, uh, Ephesians verse, uh, in Ephesians 1, um, the, the writer was beginning to tell us that we were chosen in him. I mean, we were chosen in him. It, the, in Ephesians 1, it begins to talk about predestination and redemption. Then when it comes to, this, to uh, Ephesians chapter 2 now, it begins to tell us that we were dead in our trespasses. So before we can be redeemed, before we can come to the plan of God, that power of God needs to come and touch us and get us out of the death so we can, out of our death state, so that we can relate to the word of God. So now, um, what made us dead? How were we dead? Praise the Lord Jesus. How were we dead? What brought death to our 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 human lives and misery. Yeah. What brought death? Um, we can go back to Genesis. Yes. And, and you, will, you will see that when, when God created the heavens and the earth and all the things, um, if you read Genesis 1, 20 to 25, 
it will, it will begin to let us know that when God created the animals, and he just says, let the animals come out of the sea, amen, uh, let the fish of the air and all that was created, he just spoke the word. Yes. And they, and they were done. But when it came to man, he gave man something that was different. He created a full man out of the dust and he breathed in man. Mm. So that bread that was given, God deposited something in man that he didn't do with the animals. Yes. He didn't do with the other living things that he created. And that's why in Corinthians, uh, first, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 39, we'll be telling you that there, there are different kinds of lives, different kinds mm. of flesh. Amen. Different kinds of flesh. The human being is different from the animal life, is different from the birds. Sometimes in the world, I want to tell you that everything comes from the same place. No, the spiritual life is different. And so when God made man that way, praise the Lord Jesus, it, 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 it made the division between life itself. And then he gave man the, 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 the law or the commandment that he should not eat of the tree of the, which you know very well of knowledge of good and evil in the garden, but she only eat from the tree of life. The slight mm -hmm. is dancing with us, but don't worry. Just, let's just concentrate on the word. The, the, the tree of life. And when man disobeyed God, and then God said, the day you will eat of that tree, what will happen? You will die. The day you eat of that tree, you will die. So when they ate of the tree, when God came there, he says, what have you done, Adam? What has happened? He said, the woman gave me the, the heart of commerce. So you will realize that it was not so much a physical death, it was a spiritual death. Because God says, the day you eat of it, you die. So when man disobeyed God, death was set in every human being. From that time, death and decay was set in every human being. Praise the Lord Jesus. And when death is in the land, God doesn't deal with things that are dead. So God had to drive them out of the garden because they were dead and he didn't want them to touch with their sin and disobedience their hand on the tree of life. He drove them out. And if you see throughout history, whenever Israel began to disobey God, what God did, he just allowed the enemies to carry them away. They would drive them to foreign land. They would take them to Babylon. They would take them to Assyria. They went down to Egypt. They spent 400 years. Disobedience just make God to just let you go. Because he doesn't keep dead things. He doesn't stay with the dead. But when we repent and turn back to him, then he begins to pour out his life again in us. So the word of God, and Jesus is called, the word of God. Amen? The word of God. So the life of God comes through his word to us. That's how the life of God comes through. And then that spirit in that word quickens us. Amen? Mm -hmm. And opens our ears and draw our attention to the word of God. This thing is dancing with me. I don't like you so much, but I hope you're following. Amen? Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. Amen. Now, um, I will just go on as my brother is helping you to try and set it. Uh, that's why I, text, I took some time yesterday just to write something on the paper because you don't know this, this thing that what they may do. I was just scribbling some stuff on the paper. Amen. I was looking at um, the, the Babylonian captivity itself is there was a span of over 200 years that they were always um, enslaved in Babylon. So every time when man becomes disobedient, God allows death to come back to them. In the wilderness, when they became disobedient, he allowed the fiery serpent to bite them because the death cannot please God. The death can't please God. Anything that is dead doesn't please God. Amen. Um, Psalms. Uh, Sister Alicia, I would like you to read for me. 
read, read, read Romans 8, 6 to 8, and then you go to Psalms 115. I want to draw some stuff from there. Okay, Pastor. So, Romans so 8, then. verse 6 to 8. Okay, so Romans 8, verse 6 to 8 reads, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace, because the carnal mind is enmity, enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then, they, they that are in flesh cannot please God. Psalms 115, verses 4 to 8 reads. And, then, I, verse, and then verse 17 after that. Okay, and then verse, verse 4 okay. to 8 and then verse 17. Okay, Pastor. Um, their idols are silver and gold, the works of men's hands. They have mouths, but they speak not. Eyes have they, but they see not. They have ears, but they hear not. Noses have they, but they smell not. They have hands, but they handle not. Feet have they, but they walk not. Neither speak thy through their throat. They that make them are like unto them, so is everyone that trusteth in them. Verse 17 reads, The dead praise not the Lord, neither any that go down into silence. Amen. Amen. So when we are born in sin, we're just carnal minded mm. because we are we just follow the course of the world. Yes. You don't tell people how to you don't go to school to learn how to lie, how to steal, how to cheat. Those mm. things are, we just do them in our dead state. Yes. And sometimes when we see the wickedness of men, we say, How can people do that? They are dead. Except the word of God has touched us, we are just dead. We might hear the word of God if we don't respond to it. We are dead. And when we are dead, we have no part with God. Mm, no, and, no. And, and in the psalmist there, it was talking about how people make idols. They carve them. And a lot mm. of people have their things that they bow to it. They give them food. They, they say, this yes. is our God. This is our the Bible says, those that make those things are like unto them. Those that believe in those things are like unto them. So when we have those idol, idols and we are bowing to them, we are dead to God. It doesn't matter whether you go to church, whether you pray, you are dead. Sometimes people don't see the seriousness of bowing to statues, even them in church, kissing them. You are just dead. Amen. Amen. Because you are not accepting that you have got life from Jesus. Jesus. You've not been Amen. reconciled to God. The only one who can reconcile us to God is God himself. Amen. Amen. Not man. No man can reconcile us to God. It's only God himself that can reconcile us to himself. And because of this attitude, you will see a lot of things. I read something. Uh, I saw some, somebody send me something. Uh, this week, uh, sister, sister Alicia, you will read for me Second Thessalonians two, uh, six to thirteen, please. Second Thess two Thessalonians two, six to thirteen. I hope I'm not going fast, or I hope I'm not too slow. I just want to get the pace right. Are you okay with the pace? Yep, August 2nd, Thessalonians two. 2, verses 6 to 13, reads, And now ye know that withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now let it will let, until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. 
so my reader oh sorry for even him whose coming is after the work working of satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all this um deceivableness of righteousness in them that perish because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved for this for this and for this cause god shall send them strong delusion that they shall believe a lie that they might be damned who believe damned. not the truth damned sorry That's who okay. believe not the truth but had pleasure in uh, unrighteousness but we are bound to give thanks always to god for you brethren beloved of the lord because god has from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth amen amen, amen. so amen. our salvation comes from sanctification Patient. the spirit of god draws you and sets you apart and you've got to believe the truth of the word of god but it says somewhere that, that those who don't believe the truth, they will be given strong delusions. Strong mm. delusions. And that is what is happening a lot in the land today. Um, I saw in, 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 in a church, the pastor in, in, a, in, a, in a big um, container of water, and they are doing this a lot. And that he's, taking, he's standing there with his trousers, you know, and he's closing the water. He's taking the water and the people are lined up to drink it. And they are drinking the water that he's giving them that he is standing in. So there's a lot of strong delusion that when people refuse to receive the truth, God will make them see the idols crying. God will make them see the idols bringing out milk. God will make them see idols prophesying. A lot of things will be happening because they don't want to believe the truth. That delusion will take them up. And if men don't change and begin to turn to Christ, then the strong delusions will take them up that they will have a reprobate mind that even when God comes and talks to them, they will not be able to hear. So we who are hearing the word of God, let us be careful how we maintain the life of God in us. Amen.